This year's Coon Rapids squad ended its season earlier than they had hoped, but a senior center who only played one game made a major impact. After discovering a brain disorder, Easton Sorensen watched many of the games from a hospital bed, but learned it wasn't just the fans in the stands there to support him. It's been nothing but football. Every year, every day, whether it's weight training, going to camps. Over the past seven years, Easton Sorensen's time and energy has been devoted to the game of football. I did it worked out all the time. I mean, did whatever I could. Over the summer, he really improved his shotgun snaps and his pass protection, which was uh, something I need to work on from last year, so he really progressed. Playing the game did come at a cost. Easton took some lumps, suffering concussion symptoms, and last year, a hit to the eye needed cataract surgery, but nothing kept his shoulder pads off for long. And he was playing really well over the summer, playing well during our, our fall practices. And leading up to the Elk River game, he was doing really well, did fine in the scrimmage. In that scrimmage, the Coon Rapids High School starting center took a hit and lost some vision in his left eye. Things improved and he scheduled a doctor's appointment after the first game the following week. With the eyes of college scouts on him, Easton was ready for a big season. The August sky blackened as seconds ticked off, and the bright lights weren't enough for Easton to keep darkness away. I mean, it's pain. It's temporary it'll go away right and uh, so I dealt with that and played over half the game without vision in my left eye. He took a shot and he um, said that he couldn't see out of his left eye and I was like what do you mean you can't see he's like I can't see at all and I was like well you should stop playing like that's so serious and he's like no I, I'm gonna stay and I'm not letting them put somebody else in to try and protect you and he basically played the rest of the game just to make sure that I'd be safe. And I wouldn't let anybody, especially another team, I, I wouldn't let anybody hurt him, so I would keep playing no matter what I had to go through to keep him safe. Easton and his family took steps to ensure his own safety the next day by going to the doctor's office to find out what was happening. They did an MRI, an MRA, an MRV. I mean, he was in a machine. He was in some kind of a machine all afternoon. And they brought the MRI back and found out that he had Chiari malformation. And what that is, it's where your, your brain grows more than your skull does. So it was forcing his cerebellum down into his spinal cord, and it was shutting off the flow of spinal fluid. So when he would be weight training, when he would be playing football and get, and, and get all jazzed up or take a hit, it would shut off the spinal fluid and was putting pressure on his, on his optic nerve, which was causing blindness. It also caused um, migraines too. It's something I was born with and developmentally over time. Uh, m well, my skull kept, my skull quit growing and my brain kept growing. They, they ended up sending us to one doctor and he sent us to another. And Every doctor kept saying, no, well, you're not going to be able to play anymore. He was crushed. He was just crushed. And because it has never been a thought that he wasn't going to play football. And he's, he's a big, strong kid. He went into the senior year, he was 6'2", 275. Um, and that's all he's ever wanted to do. Right away it was kind of, well, disappointment of not being able to play anymore and then, and then once I kind of got over the disappointment of not being able to play then I got into well geez what, what could have happened. Football was not the cause of his Chiari malformation but the game helped him discover he had it so in late September Easton underwent surgery to release pressure in his brain and says had it gone unnoticed another form of head trauma later could have made his life much more difficult. Instead of, you know, maybe going blind during that game, I could have been paralyzed. So it was kind of it was kind of hard to deal with right away. Everybody says football is their life. Football, football is everything that they're about. And, well, not many people can say that it actually saved their life. Doctors said there would be a positive outcome. A full recovery with no long-term damage or vision problems were expected, giving Easton a chance at a normal life, only having to avoid contact sports. There's so many people that have Kiri that didn't find it out at the time that he did. He was very fortunate. There's no permanent damage. 
Eason would never battle Anoka or Blaine again, but the Sorensen family began a new fight against Kiari Malformation, learning more about it and meeting others who have it. Over the past three months, Easton has been in and out of the hospital, but friends have never been far away. I've been down there as many times as possible, just bringing him food and Taco Bell and stuff, and just making him feel like he's still part of the team. And we've been here over, over two weeks. There has not been one day that we haven't had his teammates here, his coaches here, um, and they're you know, constantly contacting him with social media. On the first day of surgery, there were seven players here just to make sure I was okay. Easton says it was just another example of the family bond formed between teammates known as the Brotherhood of Cardinals. The Brotherhood of Cardinals is our oath that our kids take and our promise that we will be selfless football players and selfless citizens in the community. It's a family. I mean, we're all together through no matter what, even, even though our season hasn't been very good. You look over there and our morale is still high. We're all, all for each other, all trying to get the best out of each other. Easton is the epitome of BOC um, in that he will do literally anything for anybody else. We may just be teammates to everybody else, but we're brothers. I mean, I get guys coming in here and every time they leave, they tell me they love me. It's something special. It, it's a bond that can't be broken. Start first and 10 from their own 20 yard line pitch and he fumbled it and Andover has it at the 15. The Cardinals formed a tighter bond rallying around Easton but unfortunately that didn't translate into wins on the field. Coach John Young and Easton found an escape from their challenges not from the sidelines but over the phone line. I get five minutes where I just get to hang out and talk to Easton or 10 minutes. How are you doing? what's going on and he tells me his story every day and then I realize that A, this kid is really cool, he's pretty special, uh, B, he's got an unbelievable outlook on life and C, my life is not too bad or too hectic considering what that kid is going through. So it's, I need a dose of Easton every day. It really, <laughs> it makes me feel a lot better. Look out Jake, drop the hips Dwight. I know it lightens my mood tremendously but I, I can tell just by, from the start of the conversation to the end of the conversation. It, it changes his whole entire demeanor. I can, I can tell. Despite his best efforts that included getting stitches with no pain medication, Easton wasn't able to return to the sidelines for senior night, but he wasn't forgotten. Uh, we watched CTN. We have, we've live streamed the games that, that he's been in here. So uh, he knows that they're, that they're with him. They had signs up. They had his number painted on the field. It was really cool. It's very important for me to watch the games. It'd be, it'd be amazing if I could go to be at a game. Easton's condition improved and he was released from Abbott Northwestern Hospital in mid-October. Hey. The next week he found new inspiration at a youth football clinic. He met former Vikings linebacker E.J. Henderson who could relate to Easton knowing what it's like to be separated from the game by a serious injury. It's really a connection that you can only make with a very few people. We had a good talk compared our injury stories, it was, it was a pretty good time. It was really helpful. Easton returned to school and a normal life he hadn't seen in months with one more chance to be with his team in Maple Grove for the Cardinals' last game of the year. It means the world to me. It's been my life for I don't know how long, as long as I can remember. It's the little things in life that you miss and this is one that I missed a lot, being, being able to be back with the team and back with my friends and being able to be out on my own and kind of have freedom and it's pretty sweet. It's a good feeling. Easton has considered going into coaching but knows his options are nearly unlimited to decide his future.